Recently, I was working on a project that needed a three-way toggle. In this video, we're gonna build it. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I'm gonna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. First things first, let's talk about the requirements and the logic behind this. We decided to keep things simple and make the toggle position based, meaning you can click on one of the three options you want and there's no need to click and drag, which makes things significantly easier. It also means that we can build everything within CSS, no JavaScript necessary. So I like to start with HTML and that gives us something to hang our styles on. So let's think about this. Is there an HTML element that gives us the functionality that we want? There's not a slider and we can't use a checkbox because with a checkbox you can select multiple items but with a radio button, you can give someone multiple options and they can pick one. And that's essentially what we're doing here. We have three options and we want our user to pick only one. So let's just jump in and start writing code. I'm gonna write this within CodePen and it will help us keep things nice and simple. If you've never used CodePen before, it's a sandbox that will let you write code and experiment with code snippets. You can set up an account for free, but like most things, you get more features with more dollars. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new pen. I'm gonna create a new pen, but before I do anything else, I'm going to hide the JavaScript panel. We won't need it since we're gonna do everything within CSS. Within the HTML, let's start with a wrapping div and I'm gonna give this a class name of toggle. Let's create three inputs with three corresponding labels. Copy and paste this and we'll do make model and then. The first thing we need to do is tie all these radio buttons together. You'll notice if you click on each one, you can make them all selected, which is not right. You should only be able to select one at a time. This is pretty simple. We just need to put a name attribute on each radio input. So we'll call this toggle and we want these to all have the same name. Okay. We also need to add a value to each of these. So if it was a real form, we'd know the option that the user selected. So I'm gonna say license plate, model, and then. So great, we can only select one at a time now. Let's start to add some basic styles. So the first thing is I want our slider to have a background of light gray. And I want it to have a gray border that's slightly darker. And then I want to give it rounded corners. So say border radius, 30 pixels. And the background spans the entire width of the screen. And we just want it to surround our object. So to do that, we can just use display inline block. I'm gonna give this a padding of 20 pixels on the top and bottom, but zero on the left and right and we'll just control the horizontal spacing with our labels. So for the label styling, I'm gonna give this a width of 150 pixels. You may have noticed that just giving this a width of 150 pixels doesn't actually give it a width of 150 pixels. So we need to use the display property. So we can say display block, and this works, but it puts each item on its own line. So instead, we can use display inline block, which will make our label operate like a block, but everything will be on one line. Then let's center the text with text align center. Now let's set our slider. This is the piece that will show us which option is our selected item. So after our last element in our HTML, I'm going to create a div with a class of selector. And inside, I'm just gonna give it a non-breaking space. Okay, to style our selector, we'll say height of 55 pixels, a width of 150 pixels, and a background of magenta. I also want this to have rounded corners, so I'm gonna say border radius is 30 pixels. If you remember, our label needed a display of block in order for the width property to take an effect, so why is this different? 
Well, by default, a label has a display of inline. Our selector is a div, so by default, a div has a display of block. If you wanna double check this, let's open up our inspector tools within Chrome. So to make that happen, I'm just gonna hit Command Option I, and I'm gonna click on this arrow at the top. And now when I move my mouse around, you'll see a bunch of different blocks and colors appear. This is showing you all the different elements at play. I wanna click on the pink selector and this will reveal that element within my developer tools. So you can see that the selector is highlighted in the HTML. And that's an indicator letting you know that's the element that we're inspecting. And then the selector styles are loaded in the CSS panel below that. So if we take a closer look, you can see here are the styles that we created that are being applied. Right below those styles, it says user agent style sheet. And these styles are in italics. This is the browser default styles that are being applied. So here you'll see display block being applied. Okay, I'm gonna close our inspector tools so we have a little bit more room and let's keep going. Okay, I want our selector to appear under our labels indicating which element has been selected. So let's give our selector a position of absolute. This way we can say exactly where we want our element to be positioned. Okay, remember position is relative to the parent element. We don't want to position our selector based on the entire page. We want it to be relative to the toggle container that we created. So I'm gonna give our toggle class a position of relative. And then back on our selector, let's make it two pixels from the top and two pixels from the left. Okay, the only problem now is our layering. We can use the Z index to fix this though. If you've never used Z index before, you give each item that you want to control a number. And I typically use a scale of one to 9,999. Don't worry, I don't list out 9,000 elements, but if I had something like a modal window that I always want to be on top, I'll give that a value of 9,999. Okay, so here, let's give our selector a Z index of one. And then let's jump up to our label styles and give this a Z index of five. And that did not seem to make a difference. Why? Well, Z index relies on the position property and we've given our selector a position of absolute, but we didn't specify a position property for our label. So if we add a position of relative to our label, it should work. Now we wanna change the positioning of our selector based on which option we've chosen. I'm gonna add classes to all of our radio inputs. So we can say class, license plate, class, make model, and class bin. Within CSS, there's a checked selector where we can style a radio button if it's checked or selected. So let's start with our make model. Um, okay, let's jump down to the bottom and start with make model. So we can say make model, checked. But remember, we're not styling the radio button, we're styling the selector div. So fortunately for us, the selector is on the same level as our radio button, they're all siblings. If I had wrapped our inputs and labels inside a div, like this, it wouldn't work. Okay, so let's get rid of that and clean this up. Okay, in CSS, you can use the tilde located above the tab key on your keyboard. Okay, so we're gonna use that to grab the sibling. So we can say selector, and then we wanna say left 150 pixels since that's the width of our label. Okay, let's test this out, and you should see our selector move over. Perfect. It doesn't line up exactly, but that's because our radio button is making these areas greater than 150 pixels. I'm not gonna mess with it though, because we'll eventually hide our radio buttons, and when we do that, everything will line up like it's supposed to. And let's add one more for our license plates. This will be similar as before, except this time we'll say left is two pixels, and that'll just offset it from the edge a little bit. And then let's add one more for our VIN. Okay, and if we test this out, it should work. Okay, one thing I did wanna point out is that if we move our selector div above our inputs, it's gonna stop working. And that's because our selector has to appear after the inputs in order for our CSS sibling selector to work correctly. So let's give that an undo. Next step, we want our slider to animate between each selection. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the transition property. 
Okay, so on our selector class, I'm gonna say transition. We wanna animate the left property and the duration will be a quarter of a second and we want to use ease in out. So this means they'll be slow at the beginning, building up some momentum and then it'll slow down at the end. Okay, great, let's test this out. Perfect. Now we need to hide our radio buttons. We still need a way to be able to trigger them though. Fortunately, we can use our labels to do just that. We just need to add a for attribute to each label. Okay, the value we need to refer to is an ID on the radio button. So let's add that ID to our license plate input. So let's say license plate, and then we can reference that here within our for. We can do the same thing here. We can give this an ID of make and model and refer to that in the for. ID then for then. Okay, if we test this out, we should be able to click on the text now and you'll see our selector animate between each of these items. Just to make this obvious that you can click on these labels, I'm gonna add a, a cursor pointer property to our label. And that'll turn our cursor into a finger when we hover over it. Now we can hide our radio button. If we test this out, it looks great. And just to add that final layer of polish though, I'm gonna tweak our left values. Okay, for the license plate check style, we had it two pixels from the edge. So if we assume that doubles at each checkpoint, then we need to change our make model selector to 154 and our VIN to 306. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Done. I posted this code on CodePen, link in the description below. Feel free to download it, use it, whatever. It's yours. Um, if, you, if you like this video and wanna see more videos on web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Okay, and I'm done.